This podcast episode is brought to you by Coors Light. These days, everything is go, go, go. It's nonstop hustle all the time. Work, friends, family expect you to be on 24-7. Well, sometimes you just need to reach for a Coors Light because it's made to chill. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. It is literally made to chill. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Welcome back to the Keeping Carlson Short Shifts Fantasy Hockey Podcast, the only fantasy hockey podcast in the world hosted by two Keeping Carlson Cupful Tier 1 Playoff participants. My co-host, Louis Ezekiel, I'm about to welcome you to the show. My name is Ben Burnett. Louis, congratulations on earning a spot in the Tier 1 Playoffs, my friend. Thanks, bud. And to you as well. Uh, very excited that you're going to get the chance to uh, get another shot at an auction draft. And of course, you've got the opportunity to potentially be a Cupful Ultimate Champion this season. How cool. Why Why do you say you and you're not saying we? I don't, I don't well, understand this. Because I'm, I'm saying nice things to you. You're saying nice things to me. It's back and forth. Uh, it's, uh, we're, you know. Is this what the kids call banter? I don't know. <laughs> we're uh, we're vamping. We're vamp. Okay, we're we're va- right. The vampire. I've heard of this. People people talk about vamps. Um, yeah, that I don't think kids are saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean I have to say, like the the couple tier one is by far the hardest league I've ever played in in my life. Um, as people listeners of Keeping Carlson probably know, I was tilting my face off after the draft. Getting that chance to get a, a second crack at the auction draft next year, that that's what I'm I'm mainly excited for here. Cause I do feel, you know, like my team is good. I, I have no issues with the team. I feel like I deserve my spot, but I definitely feel out of control. Like it's like I hope I win, but like if I don't, eh, like what there's a lot of really, really strong competition in this division. Yeah, it you know it gets better in terms of how it goes with the draft. Um, but it was funny, you know, we were congratulating each other on clinching that spot, and then we both kind of have that thought, like, "All right, we get to do it again for another year and... of stressing out and pulling our hair out, and you know, agonizing over how much fab to bid and all that stuff." Well, and uh, Lewis, I uh, those of us who follow us closely know that we uh, we had a battle of the buds a few months ago where we faced off on week three. And currently, it looks like the first round of the playoffs will be a battle of the buds. So we get to enjoy very much uh, the stress of facing off against our co-hosts once again here next week, probably. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into the show. Nobody else need, is probably excited about hearing us clapping each other on the back. We will start with our headlines, of course. We have a bit of a trade deadline uh, standoff here, I guess, in Buffalo and in New Jersey. Lewis, why don't you run us through what we're looking at right now? All right. So we saw Taylor Hall and Kyle Palmieri sit uh, for different reasons here. And the question is really, what do you do with these guys while they seem to be having some, uh, you know, on and off situation while they are preparing for something? Uh, it seems like they are they are sitting for different reasons. Let's start with Hall. Uh, so what to do with Hall, I think, while we wait for what seems like an imminent trade, uh, it really is going to vary on your situation, right? You know, if you're in a situation where you're able to hold on to Hall, where you're able to survive a few benchings here, you're hoping for this payoff where he gets power play one deployment, first or second line deployment on a team, you know, that's not collapsing in on itself like a dying star. It's certainly worth it if you can afford to hang on in the meantime, but this is crunch time. There's a lot of teams who are probably right on the bubble who are thinking, you know, how many, how many, you know, uh, games can I survive? How many days can I survive with a dead spot on my roster? Well, but Lewis, the other um, thing there is that in Yahoo, these players are both IR eligible. So you don't have to necessarily sit with the dead roster spot. You do, though, have to use a IR spot to hold on to them. Sure, sure. 
Um, so yeah, you know, if you are in a position where, where Hall is stashable, I think you go for it. Um, you know, it's worth having that lottery ticket available where you may be able to, uh, have some, some real skill. I think Paul Mary is a little more concerning for a couple reasons. Uh, the first is that we saw a tweet from Elliot Friedman that said Paul Mary sat not because of an imminent trade of it, because contract talks between the two sides are not currently close. Um, seems a little strange, but you know, uh, certainly not unprecedented. Uh, the second is that if Paul Mary is traded, he's more likely to slot into a secondary scoring role to add some depth uh, and may end up being in a worse situation than he currently has benching aside. Now, you know, obviously nothing is, is set in stone. We don't know exactly what situation he could find himself in. But to me, that doesn't suggest the same type of hang on to this guy for that big potential payoff the way that you see with Hall, uh, just because it seems to me that the team team that brings in Paul Mary isn't bringing him in to be, you know, a superstar. He's bringing him in to, to help out the team and bolster, you know, a second line or even a third line potentially. Both of these players, though, are kind of interesting where if you have them still on your roster, it's almost because you're hoping that they get traded and and wind up in a new spot. Like if you still have Taylor Hall on your roster, it's not because you think he's going to pay off in Buffalo. Um, he's been god awful there and and it's the same with Kyle Palmieri almost this season as well it where yeah it's it'd be nice for him to keep his top line top power play spot but only 17 points in 34 games the lowest point pace that he's had since joining the Devils back in 2016 um so I did stash Kyle Palmieri once he hit IR eligibility in a league just on the off chance that he winds up somewhere but yeah hopefully you're playing on Yahoo or uh, a format that allows you to stash because both of these guys are a little bit speculative at this point I'm definitely not you know about to proclaim both of them uh, home runs after they get traded to any specific spot Yeah, I think if there's a lesson that we've learned is that there's always a lot of hype for whoever gets traded, but we don't always see it turn out uh, exactly the way that you hope. Although it was nice, uh, just as a side note, to see Eric Stahl score an overtime on his new team in Montreal. That was pretty cool. For sure. And so we are going to hop now over to Boston, where the goaltending situation somehow got even more complicated uh, previously, you know, with the Tuka Rask injury, we saw Yaro Halak. We thought that he might get a little bit of a run. And then as I discussed with our pal Jesse on, on a Short Shifts episode last week, um, Halak, uh, Halak was backed up by Dan Vladar. Vladar uh, played a game last week. And then heading into this week, Boston with five games on the schedule and Yaro Halak tests positive for COVID Monday morning. Rask appears to be ready to come back from his injury, but we now are looking at a Boston goaltending tandem of Dan Vladar and Jeremy Swayman. Uh, Vladar has been a little up and down in his few starts now in the NHL, whereas Swayman uh, just had his first start tonight, and last I checked, it was 3-2. Yep, Boston's winning 3-2. He's made 40 saves on 42 shots very similar to Vladar's uh, first start, actually, when he uh, knocked off the Pittsburgh Penguins in his uh, inaugural start. So um, we have seen both players put up good numbers. Uh, pre- earlier in this year, Swayman, for his part, has been very good on the Providence Bruins, a 189 GAA and a 933 save percentage in nine games, has an 8-1 and one record with a shutout. I'm thinking basically they're going to go hot hand until Tuka Rask can come back, and then that will determine who sticks with the club. Uh, It seems like Tuka could be back for their Thursday matchup with Washington. Anything you want to add to this uh, rundown here, Lewis? No, I think you've got the right idea. It seems like we've got two guys with outstanding debuts, uh, and you know I don't know that Swayman is going to be able to continue on the pace that he's set for himself just in the same way Vladar was not able to in that huge game he had against Pittsburgh. Uh, One other topic I did want to touch on in Boston is Charlie McAvoy missed tonight's game with an injury. Very sudden announcement right before the game, or pretty much like maybe 20 minutes before puck drop tonight. I don't know that there's much fantasy fallout here. I mean, we know that Matt Grizzlick had been on the top unit, um, but I guess they got they allowed more than 40 shots against Philadelphia. So obviously the Boston Bruins defense, even a little bit more, uh, a little bit weaker, even without their Norris quality defenseman back there. 
Yeah, I think it it you know it's it's like an Ekblad situation. McAvoy, you know, besides kind of the the, the power play, I suppose, but McAvoy kind of does it all for Boston, plays huge minutes. Uh, I don't think it is especially beneficial for everybody, for anybody, and obviously, as you said, uh, painful on the defensive end there. Uh, although, again, at least Swayman was was up to the task today. And if you're in a league that counts saves or gives points for saves, uh, you're feeling quite good about yourself there. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll talk about a few injuries and outries, and we will get into our cold streak section. You're listening to Short Shifts. Like any good team, hiring the right employees for your front office is just as important as recruiting the best players for the game. That's why you need Indeed. Indeed is the job site that makes hiring as easy as one, two, three. Post, screen, and interview all on Indeed. Get your quality shortlist of candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description faster. Only pay for the candidates that meet must-have qualifications and schedule and complete video interviews in your Indeed dashboard. According to Talent Nest, Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined. Get started right now with a free $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Get a $75 credit at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Indeed.com slash blue wire offer valid through June 30th terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to short shifts. Lewis, let's go over to Montreal where we had two injuries and two big name injuries too in the Montreal uh, Montreal's Monday night game against Edmonton. Carey Price looked to get a little tangled up with Josh Archibald sticks he wasn't moving around very well to finish the game, and it looks like he'll be out at least Wednesday's game. We don't have any further information, but they did. Uh, the Habs did call up Caden Primo to uh, to potentially get a start later on this week, um, and then the other one, you know, Brendan Gallagher broke a thumb out for several weeks. Do you have any takes on what this means for the Montreal Canadiens? All right, well, we'll start with Price, and I think this is one to keep an eye on. It at least means some short-term value for Allen, uh, who we last saw recording a 22-save, one goal against outing in a, in a win versus Ottawa on April Fool's Day. Uh, Allen's been good this year, 922 save percentage, 2.23 goals against. So I think he's a guy that you start when you can, um, but I don't know that we expect this hold to go very long, maybe not even into the weekend. Uh, you know, we got that back-to-back game in there um, before the weekend game. So it just seems, unless Allen grabs them both, I don't know if there's a ton of value from that stream because the the Habs do sound kind of optimistic. Um, with Gallagher out, uh, here are the top three lines for the Habs at practice. You have Perry, Suzuki, Anderson, Tatar, Dano, Kokaniemi, and Druan, Stahl, Toffoli. Really, when I look at that, what that looks like to me is you know, kind of uh, a return to this very even top nine, um, you know, without Gallagher in there to kind of help boost maybe one of those lines above the others. Uh, it all seems very even. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they're all within a, a couple minutes of each other in terms of even strength deployment. I think that makes a lot of sense. But uh, yeah, it's a it's an interesting spot here. And it's interesting as well to see Montreal break up that Deneau, Tatar, Gallagher line and, and to sort of see... You know, to see a few different configurations here, to see Kotkaniemi on the wing, um, yeah, I think that we will learn a little bit more as, as time goes on. And I got to say, I'm I'm interested to see what Caden Primo has. I mean, it's just been, we've been waiting a while to see what happens next in Montreal. Obviously, they signed Allen in the off or traded for Allen in the off season. But I would be happy to see Caden uh, Primo get a start here. And, and I think that it could be interesting if he does. We will now head over to St. Louis, where Colton Pareko returned somewhat suddenly from an upper body injury. He was out for so long, and then, you know, we knew he had been skating, but I, I feel like the it was a very underplayed uh, return from injury. The Blues, of course, got smacked around 6-1 by the Golden Knights. Um, I don't really have any takes on Colton Pareko. I mean, I don't think he's going to become a Alex Petrangelo of 2019-20-esque uh, fantasy asset, but it, it's nice to see Colton back out there, I guess. Yeah, I think there were some people who were holding out some hope that maybe he could help improve this porous defense. Um, 
you know, uh, the Blues going down 6-1 to one against the Golden Knights. It seems like uh, the, the three tiers in that division are the teams that get slaughtered only by Colorado, the teams that get slaughtered by Colorado and Vegas, and the teams that kind of get slaughtered by everybody. Uh, <laughs> and the Blues are definitely down in that bottom tier right now, unfortunately for them. Uh, you know, I will say, uh, Bennington has had a little bit of a... Of a you know, improvement here. Uh, he managed a quality start his last time out, and he only gave up one goal on 14 shots in relief of Vili Huso, who gave up five goals on 19 shots. So Huso does not look like an answer as a, as the backup. Um, so at least, you know, Bennington is seeming a little better, although I will say uh, he's not getting any run support. His last win came on March 19th against San Jose, uh, and St. Louis hasn't scored three goals in a game since March 20th. So the offense is really dried up. There's very little run support there. So when the goalies do make a mistake or make a you know cascading avalanche of mistakes, there's very little support uh, for them to be able to come back and win a game. So uh, unfortunate. Uh, you know, give Pareko maybe a little bit of time, and hopefully he can he can solidify that back end a little bit, and maybe Bennington is starting to find his groove a bit. But yeah, the Blues are are unfortunately having this this late season swoon um, that has dropped them. Looks like it's going to drop them out of the playoffs unless they can really turn things around in a major way very soon. Yeah, I gotta say I have almost no interest in either Blues goaltender right now. Um, as you know, Jordan Bennington hit the waiver wire in tier one of the cupful because uh, you dropped him. And I, I don't think anyone except for short shifts, Dave, not short shifts, Dave, he's stream scheme, Dave, stream scheme, Dave did add him and uh, he looked okay last Like you said, I, I actually forgot that he, he played well at the end of the week last week, but yeah, hopefully he can keep that up. But God, I'm, I'm good without a, a goaltender in St. Louis. Yeah. It's too much risky business. And like we said, if they're not scoring, what's, what's the point? They're so unlikely to get the win. All right. Well, Lewis, we're going to hop over to Arizona next, staying in the division here. And we have to talk about a player that, I think nobody maybe uh, nobody knew about a week ago, but we all know about him now because we read the stat sheet. Uh, why don't you tell us about Michael Bunting? So I think you're shortchanging yourself a little bit because I know you talked about him uh, when you noticed that this guy was playing line one, power play one in Arizona. We're talking, of course, about Monk, Michael Bunting. Uh, and you may be asking yourself, who the hell is Michael Bunting? Uh, well, this is a guy with limited prospect upside and certainty uh, on the Dauber page. But he was the 11th most added skater on Yahoo today after a three-goal outburst against L.A. on Monday, uh, much to the chagrin of the Cal Peterson owners. So Bunting has ascended to line one, power play one in Arizona. He now has five points in his four games played, including a couple power play goals. He's got 13 shots over that time and six hits to go with it. So he's providing some peripheral strength. Listen, this is, we're, we're in the, the part of the season now where everything is magnified. Every little hot run, every little bit of great deployment uh, becomes more important. And maybe you only grab him for a couple games, but most teams are in the last week of their season uh, before we head into the playoffs. So if you can jump on a hot streak like a guy like Michael Bunting here, I think uh, it makes for an appealing one. I think uh, certainly I like him over uh, a couple of the other guys that we're going to be talking about in this hot streak section. So here's my favorite thing about Michael Bunting since he was recalled to the Arizona Coyotes. 15 minutes, 17 minutes, 19 minutes, 17 minutes. I, I mean, you just minutes that's that's what you like to see when a when a guy joins a team if they're going to they're going to keep this top line together as long as michael bunting keeps scoring hat tricks so uh you know keep them on your adam if you need somebody i know arizona's got that uh that nice little monday wednesday friday schedule so maybe he can uh maybe he can provide some value if you're in a deep league i added him in my uh i added him in a dynasty today I'll try and ride the hot streak, and uh, if he goes cold, do not uh, do not have a long leash, I guess. Yeah, I think uh, if it was the middle of the season, we might be saying, hey, this is the guy to keep an eye on, but we're here in the last week of the regular season for so many teams. Yeah, take a shot at him. Jump on the hot hand while it's hot, while he's getting that great deployment. You've got other players who are maybe scoring once or twice on, on fewer shots and, and with worse deployment. Why not grab the guy who's being really put in a position to succeed by a team with nothing to lose by playing him up there? 
And so speaking of the time of the year, the end of the season that is now here, I want to talk about a cold streak that is somebody who usually we talk about a guy at this tier and it's like, yeah, he's cold, but like either you hold on or you try to trade. But now I want to talk about Johnny Gaudreau and I have to, I'm going to do a little spoiler alert. We're going to talk about whether or not it's time to drop Johnny Gaudreau. Five points in his last 16 games, which is the the entire last month or so. Uh, Daryl Sutter was hired right in that span. Um, he and Monahan have both gone super cold, and now that we've seen some uh, co- we've seen some COVID cancellations uh, through Vancouver, the NHL has still not officially canceled those Thursday, Saturday Vancouver Montreal game or Vancouver Calgary games, but they did reschedule a Calgary game for Saturday, which means that Calgary now has just one game the rest of this week. Johnny Gaudreau has gone super cold. I have to ask, I mean, I've mentioned Tier 1 several times now, and last night, both Johnny Gaudreau, or not both, sorry, three three major Flames players, Johnny Gaudreau, Jacob Markstrom, and Mark Giordano all hit the waiver wire. Sean Monahan lived another day on uh, Stream Scheme Dave's roster. What are we thinking? Are we holding on through this uncertainty and, and through this terrible week? I mean, because even if it was a packed week with how bad they've been, they're sinking your team and there doesn't seem to be any sort of relief in sight. Right. So this is kind of like the bizarro Michael Bunting, right? This is a guy that people <laughs> drafted because they were going to count on him. This was someone they wanted to hold on to the whole year. But just like with Bunting, everything is magnified here as our time compresses. And so I can see why people might be feeling like it's time to let the flames go. Again, I think this really depends on where you're at in your league. What do you need in this week, in the next couple weeks uh, to be successful, depending on when your playoffs start? I, you know, if I was in a position where I thought that I could, you know, afford to afford to have, you know, just this one game this week, you know, I'm kind of punting on this week and and I'm just going to coast on into the playoffs. I might see myself holding on to him, like you said, those those three off day games. But I would look at that schedule and see how how important that's going to be to you. Is it really adding some some games played value? Because like you said, five points in 16 games for Gaudreau, that's not the kind of thing that you like to see. I would be very hesitant to pick him up. I know he's out there on the wire right now. I'm not looking to grab him. Like we said, we're both clinched. Uh, I don't know what your plans are, but I think uh, he's not going to see a bid from me uh, as we as we head into next week. I'm more or less over it. I mean, if I had roster space, there are worse uh, worse guys to take a shot on. But like, if you're looking at, I don't know, if you're looking at your waiver wire, I know that Michael Bunting is the big name, but that one is somebody who I, I'm not quite as excited about. But like, if you're looking at your- I've got one for you. If you're looking, let me give you one. You're looking at your waiver wire, okay. you see Jared McCann. I mean, it's a pretty obvious drop to me. Oh yeah, that's that one's a no-brainer. I mean, he's been unconscious on that first power play, shooting the lights out. How about one that's a little tighter? Jesper Bratt has been on a nice scoring streak, but he's not shooting very much. Doesn't quite have that McCann deployment. Uh, would you rather have Jesper Bratt or uh, Johnny Gaudreau? It's it's actually kind of interesting that you mentioned that to me because a friend of the pod, Jordan, who is our competitor in Tier One. Um, is the is the player who dropped Johnny Gaudreau. And he was asking me like if I would do it. And I told him, um, you know, maybe not. And I was looking through his roster and I saw he has Jesper Bratt and Igor Sharangovich. And I was like, you're not going to drop one of those devils instead? And he's like, no, they're, they'll both probably outscore Johnny Gaudreau even on a week where he's playing. And I said, I agree with you on Bratt who scored, who scored again tonight. I mean, Jesper Bratt's been really good. I, I, I like Bratt. I don't I don't buy it with Sharon Govich though. So that's sort of uh, that's the distinction. That's sort of the line for me that I, that I'll draw is, you know, uh Jesper Bratt, I get it. Igor Sharon Govich, that's a a step too far. <laughs> you, you know, it's like I'll 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 cut here, but anything better than that and I'm going to hold on. Jesper Bratt, I I'll I'll swap out Gaudreau for Bratt this week and, you know, coming into next week, we got those three off nights, so I would consider holding on at that point. Lewis, that's all the time we have for tonight. For myself, Ben Burnett, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for listening. Lewis, why don't you sign us off? 
All right. Well, thank you as always for downloading our show and listening. We so appreciate it. Uh, please be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at Short Shifts KK, as well as Brian and Elon at Keeping Carlson and Dave Button of Stream Scheme at NHL Stream Scheme. Visit the great sites we research our episodes with at Yahoo, Frozen Tools, Natural Stat Trick, and Cuckupful.com. Our intro and outro music was created by Pat Roach. And until we see you next time, play smart and keep your shifts short.